Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're taking another look at threats in Rust and how we can give them mutual exclusive access to our data so that we can mutate it when needed. With this video, we're kind of going full circle when it comes to threats and sharing data across them. So this is going to be an interesting one. Let's have a look. Okay, I've already executed Rustlings Watch in the Rustlings repository, and we see that there is a compilation error in threats threats1.rs. And the compiler complains here in line 25, where we're trying to increment the jobs completed property of the status shared object that the new value cannot be assigned. And the reason for that is that the trade derev mute is required to modify through a dereference, but it is not implemented for arg of job status. Okay, so let's open up that file in exercises, threats and threats 1.rs. Okay, and here we see that the idea is the thread spawned on line 21 is completing jobs while the main thread is monitoring progress until 10 jobs are completed. Because of the difference between the spawn thread sleep time and the waiting thread sleep time, when you see six lines of waiting dot 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 and the program ends without timing out when running, you've got it. Okay, and then here we see we have a struct job status where we store the number of completed jobs in a jobs completed property of type U32. And in the main program, we see that we're creating such a job status and we initialize the jobs completed counter with zero. And because we're spinning up another thread here where we access the jobs completed property, and not only that, we're also trying to mutate it by increasing it. We are using an atomic reference counter because we have essentially this threat here trying to do stuff with this status object while at the same time down here we see that the main program is still accessing the status object as well and checking whether the jobs completed property is smaller than 10. And if that is true, it keeps printing waiting and then it waits for a bunch of milliseconds. So there is the first challenge here that we have this one thread trying to access the status object and the main program trying to do the same thing. So we do need a reference counter for that due to Rust's ownership model. Obviously, we know that only one variable can have ownership of a certain value or one function, depending on what we're dealing with. And because we're spinning up a thread here, and we have the main program still accessing the status object at the same time and the thread is accessing the status object as well. We can use a simple uh, struct value. We have to create something where multiple uh, things can have ownership and we do that with a reference counter. And because we're not just having a case where multiple things need ownership, we're also dealing with threading. So there's a chance that multiple threads could try to access and change the data at the same time. We don't just use a normal reference counter, we use an atomic reference counter. And that's something we've talked about in one of the previous videos as well. So we create an atomic reference counter of job status, create a clone for that that we can use in the thread that we create down here. Then this thread is looping over a bunch of numbers 10 times to be specific here. And then it tries to increase the jobs completed property after 250 milliseconds. So in other words, while this main program is checking this jobs completed property and waits for 500 milliseconds and keeps doing that, as long as the job completed property is smaller than 10, this thread here is running its loop and waits for a bunch of milliseconds and increases that jobs completed property. Now, if we go back to the error here, we can see again that we can't actually assign a new value to this jobs completed property of this reference counter job status value because as the compiler says, it doesn't actually implement the DRF mute trait. Now this is because Rust wants to make sure that there's not multiple threads actually trying to change the same data. Obviously that can lead to problems. And one way to get around that is to use a type called the mutex. And a mutex is a type, a value that gives a threat exclusive access to a certain data and allows it also to, to mutate it through a reference. 
So in code, this means that we could import the mutex type next to the atomic reference counter from the sync module. So I'm going to import mutex here. And then what we do is we not only create an atomic reference counter of job status. No, we're actually wrapping that job status also in a mutex. And we can create a mutex with the new method as well. And just to clarify here, a mutex is a generic type, so it can be a mutex of any given type. And then once we have this mutex, we can actually lock that certain data and get a mutable reference to it when we are inside of a thread. And while we do this, and while we do this, other threads that are trying to access the same data are actually being blocked as long as we have access to that mutex and don't release it. To show this in code, basically what we would do here when we try to access status shared jobs completed, we have instead of a simple job status value here, we have this mutex that we need to lock first. And this gives us a result of some type that I don't know from the top of my head now, but we can just unwrap it here in this particular case. And that value that we get is basically a guarded value of the, the underlying value that we're interested in. So having that unwrapped, we're actually dealing with a mutable reference to the job status object data um, that we want to mutate. And that one exposes the jobs completed property, as we can see up here in the struct. And then we can mutate that, or in this particular case, we can increase it by one. So let me save that and see if that is doing the trick. All right, so we see here that the while loop still tries to access the jobs completed property of the status object, which is now an atomic reference counter of mutex of job status. So we have to lock and unwrap it here as well. Gonna save that again and go back here. Now this is running a little bit longer because it's uh, waiting a bunch of milliseconds inside of a for loop. And yeah, here we can see that we get the message waiting six times. And the reason we get it six times is because this loop here actually runs a bit faster than this while loop here, because the while loop waits for 500 milliseconds on every turn, while the for loop is waiting only 250 milliseconds. In other words, if we, for example, decrease this milliseconds here of this uh, while loop sleep timer in the main thread, and we go back and execute this program again, we can see that the waiting output is printed much more often because the while loop iterates faster than the for loop. Okay, so that was that. I'm going to remove the I'm not done comment here and move on to the next one. And that was a little introduction to the mutex type in Rust, which enables us to give access to data across multiple threads and to mutate that particular data. This should give you a bunch of tools now to, to uh, write programs programs that come with some fun threading action. Thanks for tuning in and see you in the next video.